Clive, how do you uh, assess the progress of the team over these two test matches and uh, do you see some improvement as the, as the series is carried on? Yes, I, I thought so. I think in the, um, the point is, the first thing I think reading what Mr. Dyer said was, was correct in that if a team comes to any country, they should be able to play enough warm-up games to get accustomed to the, you know, the conditions and so on. We've traveled 12,000 miles and it's different. You have jet lag, you have the, the heat, of the, the hardness of the ground. Um, and it's just getting accustomed to a lot of things. And I think two four-day games would have probably put us in good stead, actually. I think the, and it shows in the last game we batted fairly well, pretty good test wicket, um, test pitch. So, uh, yes, I, I'm sure that um, the guys will give a good account of themselves in the long run. It will take some time to build a test team because we've lost, what, 10 of our players are playing um, the one-day format of the game, and we we have to try and, and, and look to to build a team that will stand us in good stead for the future. Are you going to, um, in terms of the preparation, is that something you're going to recommend, take back to WICB or talk to other countries about that being a, a more um, uh, regimented thing? You mean where the games are concerned? Yes, I've said that when I was chairman of ICC. And I think that if we, if we have young players, I mean, you, you can't blood a player anymore on tour. <laughs> you have two games and you'll have to, or one game for that matter. We had a four-day game and a two-day game. We had to play the, the guys we, we think are, you know, would be good enough in the test matches. So if the rain falls, then you even, it's even shorter. It happened to us in, in, um, in South Africa. And gone are the days where, you know, when we came here, we came in, what, end of September, October, and left in February. After the first month, you've eaten everything on the menu. So, <laughs> you know, the point is, is that um, we played a lot of games and you got accustomed to the conditions and so on, and you give a good account of yourself. Were, were you disappointed in the, in the schedule in terms of Cricket Australia giving it, or should the WICB have done more to...? Well, I think it is, it's a bit of both, actually. I think um, if you are <coughs> training young, you're paying a lot of money to to train them to be test cricketers. You want them to, to go to countries to, you know, to play in, the, in different countries and, and um, enjoy the, the pitches and the whatever else is there. And I don't think with the, these tours are so short these days, it's play one four day game and, and then you have a test match, test match, test match, then you go into the one days. You can only do that if you are a recognized um, country and you have a lot of reserves. Um, if you are grooming a side, you're going to find it difficult to, to, to sort of commit yourself to those things. And you'll always be behind the eighth ball if that's the way we, we want to play cricket. We want to, if we want to improve test cricket, we have to make sure that you have the best conditions and you, you're playing the longer games, really. How disappointing was it that you speak about the players in the, uh, playing in the Big Bash how disappointing is it that they chose that over the test? Well, I think the guys, yeah, you can't fault them. I think we, we're from islands, and the point is that if you, the money that is being um, paid in these shorter games, um, it's obvious that players have decided, well, they're looking towards their future. And, um, and unfortunately, we'll, we're missing out. All those guys that we have groomed for such a long while have now left. So we left with a vacuum, and we now have to fill that. And you, you learn to play test cricket in three years, really. People might say that we are not a top-class side, but some of these guys have only played four test matches. <laughs> and we can't bring anybody from home because they will even, they'll be even just as raw or young. So we have to groom our players, work with them. We have a young captain, and I'm sure that, um, that we, we would be uh, forced to be reckoned with um, in a couple of years' time. Clive, um, j just following up from that, is um, will Chris Gale be considered for your next test series or, or has things moved on? Well, it's entirely up to him, actually. I, you have to play in our four-day competition before you're selected for the longer game. So it's entirely up to him to do so. If he chooses to play one day as well, that's his choice and we'll have to 
choose accordingly then. But to play in the one-day game, you have to play in the one-day competitions. If you're playing in the four-day games, you have to play in the longer game. Uh, if you play one test, mis test matches, you have to play in the, the longer form of cricket at home. Clive, does the West Indies cricket, does it need help from the ICC? And, and in what form could that help cover? Well, they can give us some more money for starters. Um, the point is that um, to run cricket these days, it, it's, it's very, you know, it's, you have to have quite a lot of money. There's no doubt about that. And people must realize that where the West Indies is concerned is that we have islands. We have a plethora of islands. We don't, let, we don't have a country like Australia, one country. Pakistan is one country. India is one country. England is one country. New Zealand is one. We, we are spread and far and wide, so we cannot, we cannot drive anywhere. We have to fly everywhere. Um, it takes from Ghana to, Bobby, uh, to, to Jamaica just four, nearly five hours. So, it's a, you know, we spread, as I said, and, and every island is different. Have different cultures, different backgrounds, and so on. Although we are West Indians, we still have a different set of um, people playing for us. So we need to have more money to, to help us because don't forget, when we play our cricket is during the high season. Hotel rates are very exorbitant. So it's, we, we are in a very, we you know, that sort of situation. We're not as wealthy as the other countries. We, we did well in the older days, in the 70s, 80s, because we were champions. and. If you're coming as champion, you can demand something. So now if you're not champion, you, you know, get things thrown at you. And unfortunately, we're still getting that, you know, we need things thrown our way um, for us to compete with the bigger countries. Will the new structure help you there or hinder you a little bit? Because I mean, West Indies actually qualify for less money, don't they, under the new structure? Well, that's it. I mean... <laughs> Well, this is how I feel, and I've said it in Melbourne, that I think that if we have the marketing done by the ICC, and the money should be evenly distributed, because we're all playing test cricket, and, um, but if you look at the ladder, if, if Australia, you know, is, um, if Australia is number one, they'll get extra. The second position will get extra. And, and you go along that way. I don't know how much more it would be, but it would be a, a fairly good sum because you are number one. Um, but the point is, the money that you will get, well, you, you know, will we'll see you through, really. You know. Um, so I feel that that is the way that we should we should go. You can't have three countries doing extremely well, and then you know the rest are not. I'm getting a fair um, whack. Does the, does the criticism hurt when, when at the start of this series people were saying it's, it's the worst touring side that we've seen, you know, for decades? <coughs> does, does it hurt? Yes, I, I don't think... We, well, that's, that's their opinion. People are entitled to their opinion. Um, the point is, but if they, can, if they look at the situation, I wouldn't say that they're, they're the worst team, but yes, it hurts if people are uh, labelling labeling you. That we win for 19 years, we beat everybody. We were champions for 19 years. And for 5 million people, which includes Haiti, I think that is a, uh, you know, something that we should be proud of. But I agree with you. It does hurt to see us in this position. But that's because of people moving away from the test match scene. So we have to get a new bunch of players. And so that will take some time. Impressed with the way that Jason Holder has handled himself, both off the field and on the field, is such a young captain with with you know difficult circumstances. Yes, I think he's mature beyond his years. He's an excellent young man. He he's very articulate. He understands the game. It's obvious that um, you know he's given the captaincy at this time, and and he understands the, the difficulty. But I, I think he's going into the job, and I haven't found anybody else other than a couple of old guys who were thinking that. He's too young. Well, when are you old enough? I think he's, 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 he's doing extremely well. I'm quite happy, and I think uh, most the players are quite happy. 
Um, so that's our main thing. Clive, um, one thing obviously that happened, uh, not last year now, the year before that, was the, the pay structure for West Indies players was changed and the, the, the revenue is now more evenly spread so that the four-day regional competition is, um, is professional. Um, do you think that change in the long run is going to have a, have a positive effect, but is it also, is it affecting, um, say, the incentive you said about players playing Big Bash, other 2020 tournaments, has it affected the incentive for current West Indies players to, to play Test cricket? Oh, I think that if you're a young person there, that's, that, that is your dream, to play Test cricket for your country. Um, money is a subsidiary of success. The point is, is if you do well, you're going to be offered certain things. And we, we, we have to have contracts so that we can keep our players. Um, unfortunately, that other countries is that they are, they are playing these other ones again, but they're still playing for the country, they still want to play for their country. And, um, and that is the problem that we have. Our guys are moving away from playing for their country, and so we've got to fill that gap. Um, I think the this T20 competition has probably decimated our cricket as, as such. And uh, something else, obviously, that's happened in recent times was a, a, or another. Um, uh, another report coming out of CARICOM about reform of the, the WICB. Um, that's you know, been circulated around the board of late. Your thoughts on, I suppose, governance reform at that, at that level of West Indies cricket? Well, I think it's because we, we do, we're not doing well and people thinking that, you know, um, but there, there is where the governments can, can help and I, sit, I hope that they'll sit down and trash it out and so on and, and work together. I think they, you know, it's obvious that um, they have a part to play, um, and I don't think they'll get it right. Well, touch on it a little bit before, but do you feel you've got the core of a side here at the moment that can bring success to West Indies cricket in that three to four year period, and, and that the experiences they've undergone here in Australia is a sort of baptism of fire that can ultimately benefit them in the long run? I didn't hear that. I didn't, sorry, I didn't get Sorry, that. Clive, I'll speak again, mate. Um, you touched on it lightly before. Do you feel that you have the core of a side here with you now that can be a successful team for West Indies cricket? in three to four years and also that I guess the tough experiences here in Australia can ultimately benefit them in the long run? Yeah, I think, I think so. We've got some good cricketers at home too. I mean, it's quite obvious that um, people gravitate to other sports, um, but people still playing test um, want to play cricket and we, we have some very good young players. And I think once the guys do well here, I don't think there are too many teams that, that have a, as good a bowling attack as this. Um, so. It, I think it will stand them in good stead for the future. Well, I've noticed that the uh, Australian team well, might play two spinners. Is the vendor of issue fit to play? And why do you consider that option as well? Well, at the moment, he, he looks a little bit he looks doubtful. I think he's got a shoulder problem and, and not healing as well as it should, actually. We might have to draft him, Mr. Spooner. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, well, that's the sort of situation that we have. Like that. You have well, like Andre Russell, you have Lendl Simmons, you have Chris Gale. Um, well, bravo on these fellas, Dave. They've retired from the, the, the longer form of the game. So it, it's, you know, it's, it's just having to start again. I think somebody like Russell, for surely he would have you know, had a chat with him, but he has a problem with his knee and he's just playing one day cricket. Um, I don't think Lendell Simmons too would have been a nice guy to have in the middle there because he's, he, he's an opener, he plays spin very well. It was, he would have solidified um, our, our, our batting, but there again, now we, he's not involved, so we've got to look somewhere else. So it is, it's a bit of a sad situation, but I'm, I'm sure that um, our cricket will get better.